there's two really hard parts. It's not the getting the food, it's not where you're gonna sleep, it's not what you're gonna do that day. It's the not knowing. It's, does my family still care about me? Am I ever gonna see them again? What happens if I run into my parents while I'm homeless? Or stuff like that, and it's the loneliness. You could be sitting inside a group of people. Like, you could have a hundred people there with you, and you will still feel so bloody lonely. You will. You know what? On that subject, my, my feeling when I was out there was the exclusion. You're excluded from the whole society. And that's the stuff. Try, try going inside a restaurant. Like, even like, even if I'm clean, just, they look at me and they're like, okay, no, this guy, this guy lives outside, you know? Like, you know why you're here. You don't get accepted in a lot of places. A lot of people look at you funny. You get into fights like you would not believe. Because people, all, there's always some drunk teenager or some drunken college kid who thinks he's smart and he's tough and then he starts making fun of you and then you tell him to shut up and then he gets mad and starts kicking the crap out of you. Yeah. Dude, I already live outside. Like, how, how much worse can you make my day be? Well, man? that truck really? stomped me down. Yeah. Yeah. So you were homeless too? Ten years. Ten years? Wow. I didn't get in, I didn't get a place until I uh, turned old enough to get in a senior building. And you know what you're saying about not sleeping inside? It took me a year to be able to sleep. Yeah, it's hard. I could not sleep at night. I'd sleep for like a half an hour and wake up. Well, I have a brother here in Toronto. That's who I came to see. I came from Montreal because uh, he got addicted to crystal meth while he was homeless. And my brother, when I left him, he was 325 pounds, six foot six of muscle. I saw him. He's less than 130 pounds. Six foot six, and his, his six foot six and 130 pounds. His eyes are black and saggy. They say, oh, they're just a bunch of addicts. But you know, I know so many people who never touched drugs until they got out here, and it's the only comfort you got. I, I try to avoid taking drugs because I know how dangerous an addiction can be. Like, if you have an addiction, like, you'll panhandle or squeegee or do whatever it is you do all day long just to feed that addiction. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're no better or no worse off. And so many people I know have died from, from using uh, drugs. And there's always some dealer willing to be like, oh, you go steal me this and I'll give you this. Or yeah. it's, yeah, it's getting drugs is too damn easy. That's another problem. Derek, <clears throat> how long have you been out here? Um, been homeless or just out in Toronto? Oh. Uh, since I've been uh, 13 years old. How old are you now? 27. I lived inside for a little bit. I, when I was 15, I, when I was homeless, I was still going to school at 13. Because it wasn't really homeless. I would sleep outside sometimes, but most of the time I was just sleeping at my friend's house. And stuff. But like, the first real homeless experience was after um, my daughter was killed when I was 15. Um, I used to be a, a racist individual and hung out with a bunch of uh, skinheads, neo-Nazi skinheads and I started seeing um, a light-skinned girl who, who well, we had no idea she was half black and when we found out, I told him, like, can you believe this girl's half black? So I went to my house when I was in BC and they beat her and they paralyzed her. And my daughter, we, had, we just had a daughter and she was three months old when this happened and uh, after that I was lost all will for her. Pretty much everything. I became an alcoholic, I became a drug addict. I got into fights all the time. I stopped caring about myself and everything else around me. I was already well aged when I became homeless. And so I knew what other life was like. Like I was a millionaire before I was homeless and then I found crack. And within a year and a half I was bankrupt and homeless. I've heard that story before. <laughs> crack is a horrible drug. Um, I actually almost died a couple of weeks ago before I came to Toronto. I overdosed on cocaine. I, uh, my brother Keith got me into the habit of shooting cocaine with him. I just did too much. And thank God there was a cop standing on the corner of that street because I probably wouldn't be here right now. I weighed like 90 pounds when I got out of state. The reason that I finally got out of state is it was March and I was absolutely convinced I wouldn't live to the end of the month. And I had to stop and think, why give a shit? <laughs> it's a scary feeling. <laughs> you know? I know if you're gonna... If you care, if you want to live or not. Oh, yeah. You know? 
I had this idea I didn't want to live, so I knew what I had to do. I had to fuck off the drugs and get out the streets. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it can be confusing. Not coming back to it is hard too, though. Because I've gotten apartments and I've gotten jobs, but it's so hard once you've been homeless or once you know what it's really like to be homeless you you learn to love it you honestly like everyone says like oh it must be horrible being homeless it's not horrible being homeless it's horrible like i don't know how to describe this it is bad some of the homeless. aspects are horrible yeah but it's so good it's I, you probably like me i love it yeah yeah. What happens if one day I'm sitting on the street panhandling and my daughter walks by or my mother and my father go by? Just just that in itself is scary as hell. If you don't want to sit there and do that, do like you panhandling and have your own child give you 50 cents, you know? <laughs> it was, How old is your dad? Well, my two surviving daughters, one is five and one is two. I see my uh, youngest daughter all the time. Yeah, like I call her mom and I go to the Apple store over there. That Apple store, the people there are very nice. They're very nice. Like they, they don't care. Like I walked in there and I smelled bad and I was full of dirt. And they were like, "Are you okay, man?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Yo, dude, we got some lunches in the back, you know." And this guy, this one guy, just started filling my bags with lunches and stuff. That's nice. You know, like, use the computer as long as you want. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Do whatever. And I was like, "Oh, you guys are really cool." You know, it's funny. You meet you meet some really incredibly caring, helpful people, and you meet some real assholes. Oh God, there's tricks everywhere. Yeah. I've but, noticed that it's um, the younger generation, high school kids and yeah. kids that are just a sheep, they're fucking assholes, man. Yeah. I'm gonna kick your ass, why? Because I live outside? Mm, you're stinking up our streets. No, you're stinking up our streets with your bullshit. No, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> the, I was panhandling um, in Montreal, and. It was uh, the Montreal Philadelphia Flyers uh, series from last year, and I was sitting outside uh, the um, uh, bell center, and I'm panhandling, and some guy's like, oh, I have change, and he goes, go like this, because I have a lot of it, so I go like this, and he spit in my head. He thought it would be funny, and then they beat the shit out of me, and when the cops showed up, because I was oh, defending I myself, get? I got arrested, and I got thrown into a lot of holes in cell, and I went to jail for six months, and it's like, okay, hey, dude, man, look at my face. Yeah. There's three of them beating me up. I'm broken as hell, and you're throwing me in jail. Speaking of faces, uh, tell tell us what happened to your face. Oh yeah, I was walking down. Um, I was walking across Queen and Spadina, and uh, some gentleman in a car thought it would be a good idea to drink and drive. And when he was driving, he hit me with his car. He stopped his car, but he was so damn afraid of going to jail that he didn't want to call an ambulance at first, so I had to pretty much threaten the guy. I had to say, look, either you call an ambulance because I could be really badly hurt, or I have to go call the cops. And this gentleman was just, he was like, don't call the police, I don't want to go to jail. And he was more concerned about his insurance going up, him going to jail, or him losing his license, than he could have possibly killed another human being. If I would have had broken ribs, and I didn't call an ambulance, I could have liked to death. I'm um, lucky all I got was this black guy, this busted ass too, and my dislocated elbow right here. Okay, you like joining us in the back? Yes. Yeah, show the camera your pretty face, Danielle. You're Danielle, right? Hello, that's Pete. And if you're drinking, you have no business being behind no, right. a real car. Carrying a sharp weapon something. or a... Easily, even if it's bad. I see it told me, what if it had been a child or a woman or an elderly yeah. person? Yeah, and just like, with the damage it's done, it could have easily killed. Yeah, it could, have, it could have easily been a fucking woman pushing her stroller across the street. Yeah. I just Where can't believe... I, I lived up in Montreal for like nine, the last nine years. Uh, I thought I got that next time. <laughs> I lived in Montreal for a while. <laughs> Good place to party. <laughs> I, was born place to party. I was born in Toronto. Yeah. Another thing about being homeless is the sicknesses you can get. Like bed bugs, pff, fuck bed bugs. I punch a bed bug right in the face. But it's everything else. Hepatitis C. I've got hepatitis C. Yeah, yeah. Through through a fight that I got into. Not through, through, through a fight. My friend Chi Chi. He's, um, he comes from a good family, and now he's HIV positive because he was homeless for a year. 
two years when he got to Toronto, and now he's going to die within the next ten. It's terrible. And just a couple of years ago, they had Victor Lewis is running through the shelter system. You went into the shelter system, you had a 90% chance of being come up with it. Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's hard, but fun. I'll, I'll say that. It's fun to be homeless sometimes. It's oh, no, a young person game. Yeah, yeah when you're younger, time. it's yeah. a lot easier. When I was 17 doing this, it was a lot easier than, <laughs> than now. I know. Catches up to you after a while. You think... I haven't, I haven't been to an actual real doctor since I've been a child. I haven't been to a dentist since I've been, like, 11. I'm lucky I still have good teeth, but... <coughs> Surprising. It, yeah, it gets to your body eventually. Like, I limp when I walk down. And my back always hurts from sleeping on the ground. Yeah, I've got arthritis so bad that I've got major nerve damage. And I'm on painkillers constantly. If I come off the painkillers, I feel like I'm in, been dipped in boiling water. Oh boy. Oh. That's how bad it is. I go in, if the painkillers wear off and I forget to take it on time, I go into a panic attack because the pain is so bad my, my mind just can't cope with it. Oh, it's like me trying to sleep last night, eh, Danielle? Because yeah, my, my elbow, I can't, uh, I, I still can't bend it all the way. Or put weight on it, or push it down. So I was almost in tears trying to fall asleep last night. There's some people though that when you're homeless, you want to be homeless, and there are other. There's people who have done it by choice, or people who do it because they don't have an option. Like they lost all their money, or they married the wrong girl, or married the wrong guy, or well, so many different reasons. They made a mistake and went to jail, or something like that. A friend of mine, she just. She was doing, she was struggling, but she was still kept her apartment. She was going to school, and <clears throat> she hooked up with, with a guy, and he moved in. And before you know it, he's like treating her like a slave, wouldn't let her talk to her friends, eventually threatened to murder her. And now she's in a shelter, and not knowing what the hell she's going to do to police her. The police had to tell her to just get away because they couldn't protect her. Wow, that's that's horrible, man. Oh, I have to admit, also, homeless people are some of the nicest fucking people I've ever met in my life, man. <coughs> yeah, but well, it sometimes also be the meanest. Yeah. Well, if there's drugs involved, yeah. If there's drugs involved, all all bets are off. I saw a guy get punched in the, hit with a brick right over there five days ago. Some oh, older no. gentleman and an older gentleman in the head with a brick because he was sitting in his, on his uh, street grate. Oh, which is <laughs> ridiculously kind of stupid. Yeah. But it's like, okay, he's sitting on a street grate with the one right next to that that you can sit on, you know? Say something and you'll move, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, if I'm, sli if I'm sitting in someone's spot, man, and uh, I don't know if it's your spot, but if you say, listen, I sit there all the time, then okay, I can move five feet to the left and five feet to the right. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. I, I think that the homeless community is tighter than most of the so-called normal communities. It's, it's like a giant family. Yeah. If we don't take care of each other, nobody will. Yeah, like, yeah, there, there's, there is one gentleman, I have to mention this guy just because, Hummers, you know what a Hummer is, right? Yeah. They get Disgusting. nine miles to the gallon. This gentleman <clears throat> drives all around the city in the Hummer to give us it's in your bag. to give us these every single night. He and comes these. every night. Oh, night cool. He comes. He drives his Hummer, which I'm sure costs him at least three hundred dollars in gas a night just to do that. It's a little strange though. You know? <laughs> Forget his name. What was his name? What's his name, Danielle? The Guy, yeah, Hummer Boy. I don't know. I used to I have a liquor. I used to panhandle cars. I invented it. Nobody, car panning? Nobody did it before me. I worked for a while. Yeah. And I yeah, had this regular too. that came around in a Rolls Royce every Friday with a $100 bill for me. Wow. And he said, you know why I do this? He says, because I know that just like that I could be out there and leave I say that to people sometimes too when I'm panning. It's like spare change because you never know in 10 years you could be asking me. 
10 days. <laughs> you never know, life switches so quick. Yeah. It doesn't take much to, to, because people are living right on the edge. It just takes one little disaster in their life and they're homeless. Like, look at me, all it took was a death in my family. And somebody, somebody I care about really a lot getting hurt really bad and the death of my daughter and that made me complete my, made my whole life switch, just stops caring, started drinking, started doing drugs and this is where it ended me up. Well, I see that you've got uh, a good spirit. You know, you're, you're uh, like there are good people and bad people. Oh, yeah. And you're one of the good ones. Well, that's, that, I, that I contribute to my belief in God. Yes, yeah. homeless people do believe in God. <laughs> you know, you got to. to but it's like, I don't understand to. how you can be homeless and not believe in God uh, to be able to survive out here. Well, yeah, people with a um, good shepherd mission, they're sitting there behind a hot stove with people, I'm not gonna say, I was going to say older people, but that's not true, with people telling them, like, telling them off, that saying that their coffee's too strong or their egg is too watery or there's not enough food. <laughs> Be grateful for what you have, and they're doing. They're eating shit with a smile on their face because they love doing this. That Osgood Hall over there, there are lawyers that pay for the food. They go to grocery stores and buy a good food. And yeah, they go. They will yeah, go buy like three hundred sausages. At a restaurant, they actually come up to you asking you if you want juice, milk, coffee, if you want dinner. They because I'm vegetarian. They even have vegetarian uh, substitutions too. Uh, they do. The lawyers serve you and cook you the food themselves. Yeah. Yeah, they don't hire really people amazing. to go do it. They go. They do it themselves. It just shows how wonderful people can be. Until I, I think it's government that, that's, that turns people bad. You know, like uh, you're gonna like this. <laughs> In uh, Montreal, there's a place called Pops. It's uh, Bon Jovi. They know that. Even though, like, most people there are either punks, skinheads, or, like, whatever, or homeless, and they actually had members of the Green Party, the Liberal Party, the Conservative, uh, not the Conservative, the, uh, the Liberal, the, the, the MD, yeah, the NDP, the Liberal Party, the uh, Green Party, and the, the Communist Party come in and answer our questions about, like, the Conservative Party, they didn't show up at all. No. The homelessness to them does not exist. They don't care. No. I don't understand how Canadians can be like that. Uh, yeah, Just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Canada. Was my mind. Over half of us are stupid. Like three times too. Yeah. How much brain dead? How much more does this guy really have to screw up? He sent us to war. He screwed our economy real bad. We didn't have we didn't have a recession in Canada. Until this guy came into power and started being Bush's little finger puppet. Man, oh god. <laughs> we're, I'm sorry, Canada. Over one one fifth of our population is stupid. Fuck. But you know the stupid thing is that we are elected. Like, <coughs> although the majority of people did not vote for him, the guy's got a majority government. Yeah. He's, he wants to have a two-class society. He wants the he wants the rulers and the slaves. They want the upper want class the and class. real lower, real, real, real lower class. Yeah, yeah man. If like I'm sitting on a bench and some asshole starts beating the crap out of me, I have hepatitis C. That shit can kill yeah. you. Yeah. If you don't take care of it, it will kill you eventually. And you beat me up, and you don't know you have hepatitis C. Then you go get into a fight with another guy. So you get into a fight with your best friend. Then he's got it. HIV too. You go and beat up like go beat up some random guy on the yeah. street. Next thing you know, you're HIV positive. Oh, how could this happen to me? I'll tell you how it happened to you. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> so it fucking happened to you. It's amazing. Oh, I don't know. They don't seem to think at all. They just... Uh, the best part of the society, though, they don't want you to think. No. It, this whole... Robot society mentality. Is being, being set up so that you've got a master-slave type of situation and they really do everything in their power to prevent you from Who wants to be set up to fail? <laughs> That's what it is, it's setting you up to fail. Exactly. It's like I was mentioning before, you can't get your birth certificate without having a Medicare card. You can't have a Medicare card without getting your birth certificate. You can't get an address 
You know, you can't get welfare without an address, and you can't get an address without all those things. But you can't get your Medicare card, your birth certificate without an address. How the fuck <laughs> you are we supposed to do that? the shit that I went through just trying to vote this year. Uh, they had the poll in the building I live in. I had my own hip card. I had my birth certificate. I had my passport. But I didn't have anything with my address on it because the government only, the only thing they put the address on is the driver's license and I don't drive. And because of that, they weren't going to let me vote. And I lived in the building. I said, go on to the front door, you'll see my name. There you go. Press the button and my cell phone will ring. <laughs> if one of these friggin' It took me two hours of arguing with them before they let me vote. I vote. Oh yeah. In the homeless community, very few vote. Yeah, it's because they don't care, because well, it doesn't help you. They don't help you at all. They make it as hard as possible for us. Well, they also see they also see that how false the whole thing is. I mean, you got you got a choice between basically the liberals and conservatives. None of the others have a chance. Yeah. And both of them are bought and paid for by the by the hot shots. Yeah, it's uh, it's either the, the guy who's gonna... don't care who wins because they've already paid for all of this. That's why people don't vote it because you don't you're not talking about voting for somebody you like. You're trying to pick the lesser of the evil. I wonder what happens if nobody votes, like nobody at all, not one person in the entire country votes. Wow. That would be. Well, that would... <laughs> the best hope we have is to get a coalition. Yeah, I agree. Like, I agree. Like if we could get if we could get a coalition, we have a little bit. Oh fuck yeah! Oh yeah! Hey, what do you think? Today's supposed to be the end of the world. Oh yeah, eh? Yeah. I gotta, I, oh man, I gotta head up to Dundas Square and <laughs> <laughs> wait for Jesus to get there. You heard them too yesterday. Oh yeah. It was amazing, man. Eh? Of course, you know, the way the things are going, I wouldn't give a shit to tell you the truth. <laughs> I would. I have a child that has to oh, grow yeah. up. Yeah. I have the rest of my life to live. I don't, I don't want to die yet. I don't want the world to end. Well, it's a really nice day for it to end though. It's the sun is shining and <laughs> oh, another law that I find ridiculously stupid. We only have it in Montreal. Is you're not allowed to have your dog in a park anymore. Montreal? In Montreal. You're not allowed. Yeah, all of that the nonsense. That's nonsense because it's just a way to keep most homeless people or street punks in Montreal have a dog. Yeah. They have someone to love and someone to take care of them. Because when you're asleep, people can kick your ass or take a little of your shit. But it's just a way to keep us out of the parks, keep us from sleeping. Like They don't want us sleeping on the sidewalk because we're not allowed to sleep on the sidewalk. We're not allowed to sleep in the alleys or behind buildings. We were allowed to sleep in the parks, now we can't sleep in the parks. Where are we supposed to sleep? Are we supposed to stand up and walk around all night? But you know, I noticed shelters for all the I noticed something. These benches are one of some of the few benches in the city that they haven't put these bars in between each seat. Yeah. So you can't lie down on the bench. Yeah. They make ominous, they say. But yeah. they're not ominous, they're to prevent people from sleeping yeah. on the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? You know what it gets me? I've been noticed over the years, they basically fenced off every little nook and cranny in the alleys where we used to go to sleep or to do our drugs. So, now they're wondering why people are sitting out in the, in the, on downtown on the sidewalk smoking their pipe because there's no place left to hide to do it. They, they, should, they don't want to be out there, but there's no place else. They should have designated places. In Montreal, we have designated we have designated places where you can do your heroin. Or yeah, they're doing that in Vancouver. Yeah, but we also have the cops that show up there and kick yeah. the crap out of you. It's not fun. One, but we have uh, the little drop boxes for all the syringes and stuff like that. I, I haven't seen any in Toronto. I, they have them really in, the, in some of the drop-in centers, but uh, not really too evident. <laughs> well, with Montreal, you can walk. You can't walk 25 feet without finding a syringe on the ground, which scares me personally. Yeah. My my kid walks down those streets. My, like, cause I get my daughter to come and like hang out with me. I don't live, I don't have a house, but my my ex is cool. I call her. I'm like, I want to spend time with my daughter. She will come straight downtown to wherever I'm streaking, drop my daughter off with me. She tell me, don't get drunk, don't do any drugs, have fun with your kid. Call me when you want to bring her home. And I'll do it. I'll spend all day running around with my kid, running around in the parks, and going up to all my homeless friends and being like, this is my daughter sitting on the corner with her playing with her and stuff. But it, but it scares me, man, because I can walk 25 feet and find a syringe on the ground, so can my daughter. 
I, that scares the crap, and it disgusts me too, because if you're going to use drugs, use drugs. I, I support drug use. I think, I think drugs are a necessary part of our society. They get rid of pain, they help you eat, sure they can be abused, but drugs help them, like marijuana. I can't believe we could do six months in jail for having a gram of marijuana. What the fuck Ridiculous. is that crap? Yeah. The hell is that crap? Marijuana, it's not a drug, it's just a fucking plant. It fucking grows there. It, especially it. since the pharmacies are selling alcohol <coughs> drugs all the time. Buy the millions of pills yeah. every day. Dangerous. Prozac, yeah, Prozac, yeah. Per Prozac, Percocet, Valium, Dilatas, Oxycontins, yeah. Coracetin. All these drugs are basically worse. Basically heroin. Yeah, <laughs> all, they're worse than like most of the drugs that we can buy off a dealer on the street. If the government was smart, they'd legalize the use of drugs, and then they tax the shit out of it like they did everything else. Yeah. And then, yeah, exactly. they, at, least, at, least, at least then the addicts would have clean drugs and not to get the poison by it. Well, in BC, there was uh, an, uh, an epidemic in BC with, with bad heroin, where the uh, yeah. majority of uh, heroin addicts died. I don't think it was the fucking dealers doing that. I think fucking cops got their hands in somebody's stash and started doing yeah. yes. Wouldn't surprise me a bit, because the cops will tell you, I've seen some pretty amazing shit that those guys do. Well, they put in my spot. They, they come up. I was standing at, at Spadina and, and Lakeshore on the streetcar island, standing on the left hand turn, it's full side. And uh, the sergeant, the 14th division, comes up, parks his car up on the sidewalk, gets out with a gas can. Gas can? Yeah, him and his partner. They walk down under the, under the ramp to the garden where our squats were, and he parks three, three squats, mine and two of them. I witnessed it, two other people witnessed it. I lodged a complaint. A year later, I get a, I get a letter saying we've investigated this complaint and found no grounds for it. Oh, they fuck. didn't interview any of the eyewitnesses. Here's one for you. I was walking down the street, in Montreal, Quebec. I, I'm not going to say the cop's name because I remember both their names very well because they have their men with families and jobs, and I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize that, but I was walking down the street, and there was an older gentleman who had a heart attack, and he stopped breathing, and he collapsed in the middle of the street, right in front of this, right in front of a cop car, so the cops get out of their car, and they start talking on their radio, so I was like, what the fuck are you doing, get him out of the middle of the street, so I pulled him out of the middle of the street, and I had to give him CPR, I had to make him start breathing again, this guy fell on his face, and his mouth was full of blood, my mouth was full of his blood. And like when the guy starts breathing again, they call an ambulance after he's already breathing again. So the ambulance shows up and I was pissed. Because now I'm covered in blood. I don't know if I'm getting sick now. And I was yelling, I'm like, look at this. Like there's a crowd of people and I started yelling at all the people on the street. Look at what these cops just did. Their job is to protect and save all of our lives. And what were they gonna do? They were gonna let that guy die right there. Right in the middle of the street, in front of everybody. And I asked him, I'm like, why didn't you fucking help him? Why did I have to do it? They're like, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to touch a homeless person. Fuck you, buddy. So if the build, if a building's on fire, you're not going to run in there and help nobody? Well, no, I'm not going to risk my life for someone else. I got mad, so I started yelling at them. And I started like pointing it out to people. Like, this is what your tax dollars pay for. I got the shit kicked out of me 15 minutes later by two different cops. They beat the crap right out of me up and down St. Catherine Street. Fucking ridiculous, man. Yeah. Aren't they supposed to like protect you? Like, if if you're a cop and you say that you're not gonna risk your life to, to save somebody, that's pretty bad. Wrong fucking profession. Okay. Okay, go to a new job, buddy. Go be a baby. Like those two cops that if those cops should have helped. Who cares if he's homeless? He's a human being. He's fucking like dying. Any, any normal human being wouldn't think about. Wouldn't take the time to think. They just help. Yeah. 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 Well, they, but later they might say, "Oh Jesus, maybe I shouldn't have done that." Yeah. You know. But the 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 first thing that would come is getting the guy back to life. You yeah. Know? Well, like, they didn't do it. They didn't help him because there was no glory in it for them. It's yeah. like. You rescue a kid from a burning building, you're a fucking hero. You get shot in the line of duty, you're a fucking hero. You save a homeless person, why'd you do that for? Yeah, why'd you do that? You let him die. Yeah. Remember you know, what? That's one thing that, that always really amazed me. 
Like you see people, you, they're obviously totally lost, don't know where the hell they're going, and you offer to give them directions, and because you look a little different, they don't even want your help. <laughs> I had one guy one time, I was lost, I had no idea where the fuck I was, so I was like, Hey buddy, excuse me sir. And he goes, no, I don't have any. I'm like, you don't have any fucking directions to give me to get to where I want to go? Thanks for being an asshole. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to ask me for change. I'm like, no, I wanted to, I'm lost. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. I just want to find point B. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then he ended up giving me change. It was cool, but it's like... Yeah. But, you know, that's... That's understandable in a way. Because, like... Like you walk down the street, and like honestly, God, you get hit every few feet with somebody else. And I can understand people getting tired. Of it. Like what what gets me is when I'm homeless and obviously homeless, they're asking me. Ask a fucking citizen for change. Yeah, ask ask another ask homeless me. person for change. <laughs> what the hell? How what the hell do you think I got mine? You know. All the time. The funny thing is, though, is if, if a homeless person needs $20, $20 to buy their rock and they got 21 odds are that homeless person is giving you that extra dollar. Yeah. Which yeah. is fucking yeah. ironic. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's ironic that a homeless person will give another homeless person money yet yeah. can spare the money. Yeah. Will not. Right. Well, there's some people I just won't ask. Like, I won't ask somebody who has a child. Yeah. I won't ask somebody who's in there. What? Who's injured when like, oh, yeah. they have a broken leg? Because they need that money. If you're walking down the street, and you got three little kids with you. I'm not asking you for no, a penny. No. It's hard it's enough. Not you know? to just keep the kids in. If you're, well, if you're, out if you're still in high school, I won't ask you for change. Because you need that money to honestly get pot and get drunk with your friends every night. Because that's what I did in high school. <laughs> you know, and if you're if you're an older person, like like not like older, like 35, 36. I'm talking 71, 72. I'm not asking because a pension doesn't give you a lot of money, man. And you're only giving so much, you need that money. I won't ask an older person. But oh. hey, you know what? Because I spent so, so much time homeless, I know how to, how to live so cheap that now that I've got a pension, I feel rich. Yeah. You know, like I got a minimum pension. And it's like, holy <coughs> cow, where did I get all this money? <laughs> for the first time in my life, for the first time I've been on welfare. And it was here in Toronto because I needed the money because I know no, I knew no one except for my brother and my friend Curtis and I don't want to hang out with my brother because he did his crystal math and my friend Curtis has his own life so you know but this is the first time in my life I've ever been on welfare because I didn't want to be on welfare because I'm still young I'm still yeah. hungry you know there are other people out there that needed a lot more than I do if you are under the age of 18 unless you need <coughs> abused or unless you read I'm going to say this right to you right now if you're under the age of 18, if you are physically handicapped, mentally handicapped, unless you're being abused or really badly mistreated, stay at home because this is hard. Being homeless is hard. You wake up and you're hurt. You never know when the next time you're going to eat is. You never know if your family still loves you. You never know if you're going to have a child or a regular life. You don't know. If you ever, ever have the chance to stay home or go back home, do it. Swallow your pride and go home. Yeah. If my mom were to call me, like, I don't like my mom. She abandoned me when I was young. But if she were to come down the street and say, Derek, come home, the first thing I'd say is, can I bring Danielle? My mom, she would, for sure, she would say yes. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going home. I don't like this. I don't want to spend the rest of my life doing this. I try, I'm trying to get a job. I ask people, man, when I see people with their moving trucks, I'm like, hey, man, do you need help? You know, I, I, I want to get a job really bad. I want to start having a regular life. I want to have my daughter back in my arms. I want to. Have you tried any of the, uh, they have like these temporary help places where you go early in the morning and, and they, they take care of you? There's a row of guys and jobs come in. You might be moving someday for a day, or you might be just digging a hole or whatever. Wait a minute, they have places like that? Yeah. Where yeah. are these places? Uh, I haven't been to one in a long time, so I can't locate them for you, but temporary help services. Check out a, a few of them. If they don't if they do not do it, they'll tell you where to go. Well, that is there awesome. are I places where that. you can just 
And like, you don't every day, you won't every day get a job, but you'll get some. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I've done that before. We have one of those in Montreal, it's called yeah. Red Roof. You just go and stand outside, and construction workers that need help that day or That's whatever, exactly. they see you with exactly. steel toe boots on, they're like, hey buddy, get in the truck, I'll buy you dinner and I'll pay you. Yeah. Well, you're welcome to work. They'll tell you where they are. Yeah, my, mine, mine is actually getting my uh, worker, Miss Marley Wilson, awesome lady, by the way. She actually is, has already started compiling, like, because I speak three different languages fluently. I speak English, French, and Russian. All fluent. Russian? Yeah. It's a hard language to learn, trust me. I can't me. believe you. You're just listening to it. To and when, I told her, when I told her I speak English, French, and Russian, she was actually amazed that I didn't have a job in Toronto yet. And I was like, oh, look at me, I smell bad. <laughs> I look bad, you know. But she's like, okay, well, with that qualification, I'm going to start. And she's actually like, I have papers in my bag right here. She actually gave me a list of places that, uh, fuck it, I'll find it later, that uh, actually where I can go and say, listen, I speak French. I can give people tours from people from Quebec because they speak French. I said, really? I can work on a phone. She's like, you can get a job pretty much working on any phone anywhere, calling like other provinces or other countries. And I was like, really? She was an awesome lady, man. She she really tried to help me out. Your worker sucked ass. Yeah, my worker. No offense when I say this, but she's a bitch. Oh, I take offense. There are both kinds. There yeah. are both kinds. I've been I've been through that system, and there are workers that will bend over the backwards, break the rules even to help. And there are other workers who will do everything in their power to prevent you from getting what you're entitled to. I, I, I can sleep outside and still have a job, no problem. I can wake up at 6 o'clock every morning. Just getting hired is hard, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I made mistakes. I went and got tattoos on my face. You know, like, you can tell I'm a fighter. I tell my friends, I tell my friends, you know, get your tats and keep them off your face. Because, you know, there might be a day when you're this My clothes are dirty. I smell bad. And, like, they'll look at you and they'll be like, we don't want to hire this guy just because. Just because, man. Yeah, I could, I could be way more qualified than the guy you just hired for the job, you know? Like, being homeless should be considered a qualification. You know how hard it is to carry 150 pounds on your back everywhere you go, all day, every day? Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's hard, man. We walk around in the rain. We sleep in the rain. Tell him the story about the guy who uh, decided that he was going to try his homelessness for a month. The guy tried to, he decided to try to be homeless for a month. After 20 days, he was crying and couldn't do it anymore. Here's an example of asshole people. There was a guy, he was drunk as hell. This guy was wasted. Falling down, wasted. I'm sleeping right over there with my girlfriend over here, and this guy's like, oh, look, a bed. He comes and he like, lifts the blanket up and like, crawls in the bed next to me. So I'm like, whatever, you know, buddy's drunk, he's tired. I don't sleep, you know, so I move on over a little bit, squished her against the bench a little bit. Then his friends came and started fucking throwing things at me and like hitting me and yelling shit at me. It's like, dude, like, you're like, wake up, wake up. I wake up. I'm like, yeah, I'm awake. What do you want? They're like, not you, him. And then one guy's like, why the fuck are you homeless for? Why are you homeless? Why are you a dirty bum? I'm like, because my daughter was killed. I couldn't handle it. I became an alcoholic and a drug addict. And it's like, oh, that's a good reason to be homeless. I'm like, no, it's a bad reason to be homeless. 